Good morning. So let's have a quick show of hands. Who uses SharePoint? Those of you do. Um, for those who put their hands up, who, who uses folders in SharePoint? Yeah, okay, okay. right. Um, okay, um, my background in SharePoint since it first came out, 2001, through all its different flavors. Uh, its current version is 2016. Office 365, um, the, the advantage of going into the cloud, Office 365, you're not stuck with the upgrade migration every time Microsoft change version. But currently, the Office 365 SharePoint is not all 2013 SharePoint, and it's not all 2016 SharePoint. <laughs> they're, they're busy upgrading com components of it. Um, do some of you have on-premise share SharePoint? Yeah, okay. The one element of Office 365 that's very easy is SharePoint, because whether you have it on-premise or in the cloud, um, it's, it is the same product. Okay, the thought processes and the planning are eg exactly the same. Okay, so, um, so what is SharePoint uh, and what can we use it for? Oh, I'm going to be stuck with Rob with the same button issues. How's the button? There, there we go. Come on, oh, there we go. So, um, what is Share SharePoint? I, its core uh, that most people think they want is they want a, a document management product. Yeah, so that's what SharePoint is. But it's only a document management product when you tell it how you want it to manage your documents. Okay. If you don't tell it how you want it to manage your documents, you'll have, as Barry mentioned, you'll have like what most SharePoint environments are in the world, where you've swapped Windows Explorer and browsing a C drive, and you're using Internet Explorer and browsing a website in folders, in folders, in folders, in folders. Yeah. Um, if that's what you're doing, you Yes, you are practically using SharePoint, but you're technically, you are not using SharePoint at all. Yeah. Um, the biggest part of SharePoint really is it's not a technical ex exercise. Yeah. It is a big planning ex exercise. IT might be able to build the solution, but it's not necessary an IT skill set to plan and understand what the solution is going to be. Because it's not an IT solution, it is a business solu solution. Yeah. Um, we can put reporting dashboards in there. It's got a very nice search fun functionality with it. Um, you can search for all sorts of things. Putting files in folders starts limiting the searching, okay? Because you don't necessarily get back uh, the things that you are looking looking for. Branding, a couple of things in SharePoint. The common complaint: don't like what it looks like, and the navigation's rubbish, okay? Um, SharePoint doesn't have navigation. Whatever navigation your SharePoint has is what you've told it to put there, okay? Obviously, it has to have an out-of-the-box look as provided by Microsoft, not the most exciting, but you can make it look like anything you want, okay? You don't need a lot of SharePoint skill to change what SharePoint looks like. Um, your chosen career would be a web developer, okay? And then it's also got, um, we, we can, it is a platform for forms development. Some of you may have heard of InfoPath as a product, yeah, that was Microsoft's forms tool, which they've now give, given up on. Um, there's no more work on InfoPath as a product, InfoPath 2013, but Microsoft supports it until April 2016, which is apparently when SharePoint 2016 support stops. Okay, but they're not developing that product any anymore. There are far more um, sophisticated third-party tools for forms. Um, it's also a platform for workflow. You hear lots of marketing blurb about SharePoint, automate all your processes, get rid of all your headaches, you're without the need to code, okay? Um, Microsoft have not really provided any workflow creation tools. There are some very basic out-of-the-box ones which are <coughs> fine within a team. They're pretty useless across, across departments or even in big teams. Uh, they have a product called SharePoint Designer, uh, which they've also given up on. Um, SharePoint Designer 2013 is the last version of that. You can create slightly more sophisticated workflows with SharePoint Designer. Um, Microsoft's only other offering after that is Visual Studio and from the ground up code what you want, what your process is, yeah? um, which sort of contradicts their marketing blurb of automate all your processes without the need to code. Yeah? Again, there are some third party tools that enable work, um, workflows. And then another side of it, uh, more long-term long management of your data is you can, you can configure proper legally compliant records management within Share, SharePoint. Yeah? So once your document has been used and it's served its purpose to the business, um, 
It's being revised, it's being updated, it's being dis dis distributed. That might be for a couple of days, it might be for a couple of years. Yeah? At some point in time, your document has served its purpose to the business. Yeah? Um, then you've got three, three options. Just right-click, delete, and get rid, rid of it. Back it up onto a tape, let uh, Iron Mountain or other providers come around and take it off somewhere. Um, you can move it all off. Um, some of you may have these, lots of companies have. There's a folder on your network drive somewhere that seems to always be in capital letters. Old stuff, do not delete any of this. And then you move it all in there, yeah? Um, in the SharePoint world, uh, none of those options I've just explained are legally compliant records management. Okay, but within SharePoint, you can configure long-term storage and um, management of records. So data that will never, ever change, but you have a legal obligation to keep it for X, X number of years in t into the uh, future. Okay, so just a couple of examples here. Um, what, are, what can we make it look like? I'll just show you three websites. That one there, the new, uh, so not the new one anymore, that's the NHS website. Uh, that's Sha SharePoint. If, you, if, you, if you've got SharePoint 2013 in your business, that's SharePoint 2013. Uh, the University of uh, Northampton, Sha SharePoint, and the VNA Waterfront down in Cape Town, that's also Sha SharePoint. Yeah. And as you, as you can see, there's no, they've put their navigation there. They've chosen to put theirs there, but they've got some navigation up there as as well and same with the nhs website they have levels of nav navigation yeah um things to try and encourage your users to do um if you couldn't find something on there what would you do would you find the nhs and say well where's this i can't find it on your on your website what would you do search yeah that's sharepoint search yeah um start encouraging people in the business Use the share, use the share, SharePoint search. So looking in here, some of the demos I'm going to give, there's a search box in exactly the same place. Yeah, just their web developer has moved it and put it there and put it put a different border around it. Yeah, so it is try try and encourage people if you're going down the SharePoint route is to search for stuff because we do that in every aspect of our life apart from when we're at work. Yeah. I created that file. I will. I'll damn well find find it. Yeah, and I, I, I will not search for it. Okay, you're up and down these little yellow legs. Yeah, um, going down legs of folders, folder in a folder in a folder in a folder in a folder. And when you get to the end, there's nothing there. Yeah, it's just called new folder or new folder two. Yeah, or or you've got all the way down that long leg, and there's only one folder there. Okay, so it is a it is honestly a big planning e e exercise, which is. It's not an IT thing. Forget about the technology, okay? Because there are loads of document management systems available, yeah? And no matter which one you choose, you chose to go for, you, you still have to plan how you want to manage your doc, doc, documents, yeah? Um, so this is almost out of the box, Office 365. I've changed the color. We've put a little logo there. So there are some very, very simple rebranding things you can do with what you get out of, out of, out of the box, or like the NHS, University of Northampton, you can spend a lot of money with a web developer and make it look nothing like Share, SharePoint. Yeah. Um, so a couple of um, demos, if we run through a couple of things here. So the first one we're talking about really is if you implement SharePoint well in your organization, as in you planned what it is you wanted to do, um, you will change the way people work. Okay. And that's the biggest problem your organization will have. Okay? It's not that you're giving them some new stuff. It's that you're giving them some new stuff and saying you can't work the way you used, used to work. Yeah? So first thing is a well-structured, well-planned <coughs> SharePoint environment. You never use a folder again. Okay? So when you save your files into a SharePoint library, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a file that you're sharing, um, instead of in a folder, in a folder, in a folder, you would have developed some tags, um, columns, taxonomy, met metadata, different books talk of different things, but they're all basically the same thing. Where you're actually telling SharePoint about the file instead of hiding it in some folder hierarchy that nobody ever remembers. Yeah? Um, it's similar to I iTunes. I presume some of you have got music in, in an iTunes library. Yeah. Um, if you go down into what actually your iTunes library is, it's just hundreds or thousands of songs. Yeah, 
Um, what do we like in iTunes? There's a little little icons we can click on. We can click on artist, and it rearranges all your songs by the artist that sings them. Yeah, you can click on album. It rearranges all your songs by the al by the album that they come come from. Yeah, and that's all that tagging is. Okay, and that's part of the the big. It's probably the biggest planning exercise within SharePoint or or any document management system, is determining what your tags are. Okay. And then build, building it. Yeah. Um, again, even if you uh, if you go through the planning process, there are efficient ways of building a SharePoint environment, and there are inefficient ways of build, building it. Yeah. And again, most companies end up with something that's up and running pretty quick. Users start using it, becomes a long term headache for somebody to look after. Okay. But if you sit, if you step back a, a little bit, do your planning properly. Um, and th think of all the tools that SharePoint has, because that's all that you've got, really. You've got a massive toolbox <coughs> of things, yeah? And if you don't understand all of those tools, you're not going to know which one to use for the um, issue that, that's um, come up. <coughs> that's, that's the first thing. Tagging is um, never use a folder. An another one, and I'm sure you all do it, you have a document, project one docx open it next week you type a, you type another paragraph into it try to remember to go file save as and change it as project one and then something v1 rev1 your initials the dates yeah so every time you change the file you change the name of the file yeah um another big bit of functionality in sharepoint is a thing called version con control yeah so that's an, another major change to the way people work is you, you would never change the name of a file again um, if you're using a um, version controlled area. Okay. So there's all these different elements. I'm going to demonstrate some, some of them to you now. And part of your planning process is all these elements of document management, they aren't all relevant to every single file that you're, everyone in your business is going to create. Version control is very good. It's great for policies, procedures, bids, those types of things. But there's lots of content that your organization creates where version control will just get in the way of people that need to use it. Yeah. Um, there's a concept of checking out a document. Uh, over here, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that. Um, Terence spoke about um, co-authoring earlier. Yeah. There, there might be content in your organization, policy, procedural type stuff, finance stuff, um, where you, you want to make sure that at any one point in time, only one person can, can be working on the document document yeah uh, and that's where um checkout come comes in useful yeah uh the two th there's no right or wrong way of doing share sharepoint but one of the really very inefficient <laughs> ways of doing it is says well i don't have time to think about any of that planning let's switch it all on okay um or well i don't have time to think about the planning let's not use any of that um rather stay with your t drive or your s, s drive if you're not going to use the, doc the document management features yeah so just as, just as a quick look through here, if we look at version con control, if I, if I come and look in this library, um, see what we've got here is I've got a number of documents um, that, are, that are all at different versions. Yeah? Um, the version control we've got switched on here is a thing called major and minor version con control. Um, some of the stories you'll hear from users as to that massive justification of why they can't use SharePoint well, I don't want people to see this file until I'm ready for them to see it. Okay, version control allows you to get around that. Yeah? So we're not going to mess around with the permissions on the file. We're going to use version control to control the uh, vis vis visibility of the uh, file. Yeah? So in this example, I've got major and minor version con control. The number to the right of the dot is the minor version. The number to the left is the uh, major version. Readers in your organization, they can only see major versions of doc documents. And they can only see the latest major version. So if we take this first document, it's at version 2.1. Okay. <coughs> so we've published a version 2.0. So what that automatically does is it, is it withdraws 1.0. 1, 1 so users cannot get to 1.0 of that document anymore. Version 2.0 is now the version that the whole org organization can see. You as authors, though, can come in and you can keep working on it. Yeah. So some authors opened that document, 2.0, typed something into it, made some, made some change to it and saved it back. SharePoint's ticked it up to version 
But if I was just a reader and I opened that document, I would be given version 2.0. Okay. Ad advantage of that, um, you can have links now. You have links in your intranet if you want to, to the, to the conditions of employment handbook and the pension policy and all of, all, all of those things. Because the name of the document is never, ever going to change. Uh, so the hyperlink always works. The version control makes sure that whenever a user opens, clicks on that link for the conditions of employment, they get the latest published version of uh, that doc, 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 uh, document. That's, that's all that version control is. Uh, and it's a complete waste of time on lots of stuff you do. Yeah? But on, s on some stuff, it does have its um, purpose. The big one, though, is the met metadata. So this is one we did for a college a couple of years ago. And you won't understand what your metadata is until you analyze the way you currently work. Okay. Um, so as an example, I, I haven't seen any of your network shares, but I bet they're all pretty much the same. That when you come into the first level, yeah, all you see is folders. Yeah? All right. You click in any one of those folders, all you see is more folders. Yeah, and in one of those, you'll see more folders. Maybe by the time you get to folder number four or five, you'll get some files will start trick, trick, uh, trickling in. Yeah. So any folder that's only got folders in is a, a good candidate to become a met metadata field. And then after that, it's just process that becomes other fields. Yeah. So as, as an example, this college, um, they structured on their, on their network share, they had a folder for every academic year. This is where all the um, curriculum material was. They had a folder for every academic year, and then they had a folder for every de department. Okay, and then within there was the files for that department in that academic year. Okay, but that irritated everybody because that's not how they were employed. They weren't employed by a year. They were employed by a de department. Yeah, so you're a chemistry teacher or you're a physics teacher. Yeah. Problem with that, you were a physics teacher, but there was no one place you could go to and see all of the uh, physics doc documents because of the way the folder hier hierarchies there. And, and uh, no one had the courage to take on completely rearranging the folder hier hierarchy, so they just lived with it. Other bits of concept that they had was um, every document had to, every bit of curricular material had to have an owner, okay, the person responsible for the content of the doc document which is not necessarily the created by or the last modified by. Yeah? It's, it's the person who's re responsible for the content of it. And another part they had is every single document had to be reviewed every 12 months. Okay, so, uh, and it had to be reviewed by the cus custodian. Okay. So we went through all of that with them and we came up with, so, so this, this year, academic year as a column and department as a column, that got rid of their network share that got rid of all of the, all of the all of the folders. Yeah, um, this got rid of a process, and some of you may have this. What they had another master access database that controlled records. Some of you may have those drawing records or whatever it is. You have an Excel spreadsheet or a or a database that's the control sheet for this heap of files you've got all over your net network. But so what we got now is you've got all of that all in the uh, same place. Okay. But there's no folders, yeah? So it could, could become a mess. In, in theory, in one library, you could save 30 million files. Okay, that would become a bit of a mess without some way of slicing and dicing through it, yeah? <coughs> so this is where the iTunes analogy of album artist genre starts com coming in now. Because we've got these tags, yeah, we can now create views on this heap of data that allow us to look at it from any angle we want. Okay, so... Just to show you a, cu a couple of those. <coughs> so here's the uh, files, yeah, and I've created a number of different views. So if we want to see it by year and de department, the way they were tr traditionally used to browse for things. I can click on there, and there's now my academic year folders. Yeah. And if I expand that, there's my de de uh, department folders. There's maths and physics and so on. Yeah. We also created a view that did it the other way around for them. So by department and then year. So if we have a look at that, that flips around and just shows them the other way around. So now there's all the chemistry documents by ac ac academic year. Okay. 
We left that with them, spoke to them about a month later for feedback. They said that's all, that's great. Everyone's very happy with it. Um, however, um, physics man, head of, head of physics has come along and said, well, actually, that's great. Um, but if it's not a physics document, I really don't need, need to see it. Me and other teachers in the physics department, we don't need to see it. So can you just create me a view that shows physics con content? Yeah? And uh, we can. So we've got another view here which is just showing physics doc documents now, yeah? Broken down by year. But at any time you want, you can just come back and look at any other, any other view of slicing and dicing through this, yeah? Um, another little bit of functionality we can look at, sorry, just move this over, was um, this date, yeah? Hey, um, again, a couple of weeks later, we, they, one of them phoned back and said, this is great, that's a very nice view. Um, what would be really nice if we could see that in a calendar yeah um so pretty easy to do we didn't have to move that information out into a sharepoint calendar as some of you know in sharepoint you can create a calendar um but you can also just create a calendar view on on things so right here where all my files are stored we can make it look as though it's a calendar yeah so if we now have a look in here i have a view called next review calendar and this is, my, this is my library. I'm looking at files here now. Yeah? They're just being displayed as a cal calendar. And as I scroll through the months, I can see which documents need to be reviewed on which date. Yeah. And when you've, had it, when you've had enough of it, you can just come, come back. Come on. Ah, edge. Good. There we go. We can just come back and then look at look at look at my heap of files again. Yeah, so that's the uh, tagging concept. Yeah, it's a it's a planning exercise. Yeah, which is not necessary. Some of you, a, a, a lot of you, are from I, IT. That's not that's not an IT skill set. Yeah, um, and it is a bit of a problem with SharePoint. The Microsoft never seemed really got right. There's, there's there's users who are irritated by the by the way they work, and the way they have to work. Yeah, and there's IT who provide the systems that they work in. The network share and SQL and email and so on, yeah. So then a, a, along comes SharePoint and sits between both of those, yeah. And the people who are frustrated by how they work don't know what this product can do, yeah. And the people who've installed it <coughs> and got it up and running, IT, don't know what the frustrations are, yeah. So you and and that's why SharePoint does end up really as a the most expensive way you could ever store a file, yeah, because you're now storing files in a SQL database. Um, and you're using a web browser interface mm -hmm. to get to your files stored, stored in folders. Yeah. Taking it a little bit further, though, um, you may want to run some rep um, reports on these. Yeah. So as an example that I'll show you now, management wanted a breakdown of these doc documents based on how they're tagged. Yeah. Um, number of ways in which we can do it, but what I've done is I've created a simple Excel report here. So this is using a little bit of functionality called Excel services, which is not Excel online that Terence was talking about earlier. Yeah. So we can use Excel services. So you, you open up Excel, you create, you put all your pivot tables and charts and what, whatever you want in your spread, spreadsheet. So this is a this is an Excel spreadsheet that's connected to that library, and it's showing me the uh, documents by department. Yeah, and it is real real time, and depending on how you design on how how good your Excel skill is, um, I can now come in here, and if I've if I've got multiple charts in a single Excel spread, spreadsheet, <laughs> um, I can now look at different charts. I could now come come in here. And this is in the same Excel spreadsheet, just showing me a different chart. If I want to look at p a pivot table, that's doing that's doing it that way for me. That's a pivot table on total count by year. So, and that is real time data coming from there, and it's just it's just looking at these columns here. Yeah, so you can get quite powerful with um, presenting data. A um, couple of other things. There's the there's the concept of checking in and checking out a doc document. So if you ever 
If you're uh, ever in SharePoint, you come across a, a where, the, where the file icon has got a little green square with it. it. Means someone has checked that document out, which means nobody else can work on it, but hundreds of people can open it. Okay, um, and they would just be given a read-only copy of it. Okay. Um, we can do process. We can create workflows. Um, if you want to go seriously about workflows, uh, I've got an example here of a form. Not there, I haven't. Uh, where's my where is So this is using an info path form there, which is being fed by various things. So I can select a client name and it automatically populates their contact details and so on. We can do various things, things with that. Obviously, that as technology in the Microsoft world is now uh, on its way out. Um, so there are, we work a lot with a, with a third party company called Nin Nintex who have a very powerful forms building tool and they also have a very powerful workflow tool. Um, the problem with InfoPath as forms is you cannot make them really properly browser compatible and you can't make them work properly on um, mobile devices. Yeah. But Nintex, as the company that we work with, they have a they have an they have an app you can use on here, okay, and you can you can be anywhere in the world you want, and you can fill in a leaf form and fill in a, an ex expense form and so on. Yeah, if you're part of a workflow process, some ap approval of con content, you, you can also ap approve your uh, workflow paths from uh, from from here. Almost up for time. Uh, any uh, questions? Um, yes. Are you saying that since this is just for 2013 and yes. you're looking at using workspace um, for expenses and stuff like that? Yes. Are you saying not to use that now? Is it being What's that? Workflows. No, no. Workflows, workflows work. Um, there are some very simple out of the box workflows that Microsoft have provided that, that won't be sophisticated enough for what you're trying to do. Um, you may be able to do it with a SharePoint designer workflow, um, but most processes that people need re require something more um, sophisticated than that. And that's where you generally need to look at some sort of third-party tool for workflow. So SharePoint's the platform that will run any process you want. Microsoft have not provided the product that you can easily map to that process. But it's not the underlying... No, no, they're going, to, they're going to keep the ones that they've got provide, provided with. In Office 365, uh, there's a little bit of functionality called Flow. Um, if you're doing it in the Office 365 world. <coughs> Somewhere down here. Yeah. Right down at the, at the bottom here, they last year they launched a thing called Flow, which allows you to create slightly more sophisticated workflows. Um, but that, as a, as a concept, is not available on-premise. It's, it's only available in, in Office 3, 365. Okay. So when you, when you are looking at process, if you want to do pro – so as a simple example, um, this college – so these were their folders. This was their process in an, in an Excel spreadsheet. The last little bit of process they had was uh, two weeks before that date uh, – that person must be sent an email saying, don't forget you need to review that document by that date. Yeah? Um, that's how the college was doing it, was one of the secretaries in the college, every Monday morning, their first job was to open up that Excel spreadsheet that had thousands of rows of information in, find, filter Excel stuff, filter it, find all the things that need to be reviewed in the next 12 day, uh, four, 14 days, and email that person. Okay. That worked fine, apart from in the UK, most bank holidays are on a Monday. Yeah, so on, on those Mondays, that those emails never went out. Yeah. Uh, that secondary had days leave in the year, which sometimes were on Monday, so those emails didn't. That, <laughs> when uh, next review date equals today plus 14, um, email that person. That, as a simple requirement, you cannot create in what Microsoft has provided, unless you open Visual Studio and off you go. Um, so, just a big planning ex ex exercise. Really. I'm not technical if, uh, as my background, um, but it's it's trying to under it's understanding what the product can do and what the problem is, yeah, and using the elements of SharePoint to make it fit. One guy gave me an analogy a couple of months ago, like like the um, apprentice carpenter who's got this massive toolbox of carpentry tools, yeah. 
but it's only been taught what the hammer what, what the hammer does. So everything that apprentice sees just looks like a nail. Uh, and it there's a nail, and he just goes and hits it. So you you need to understand all of the tools so that so that you actually pick out the right tool. Okay, so that give you a quick overview. That, that that's what most companies want SharePoint to do. They you want it to manage your documents that your staff creates. 